So this is hemp grown for fiber, purpose grown for fiber. These plants grew basically all summer, very vigorously. We just allowed this to set seed just to see what this variety would look like going to seed. The ideal time to have harvested it for fiber would have been right before flowering. Growing the plants was just dropping the seeds in with a grain drill and then applying some water with sprinklers to get germination. For fiber, you can, you can see the density here, step through. This part here was harvested, so you can see how many plants per square foot. On the grain side or seed production side, people have found that about 400,000 plants per acre is where you, you plateau in terms of your yields. And for fiber, you're, you're looking at 800,000 to a million plants per acre. So it's like double the density to get, you know, this, this kind of effect. In, in vegetative stage of growth, there aren't that many pests that would be significant for fiber hemp. Most of your pest problems in any given plant you grow tend to show up in your flowering stage. Flowering, seed maturity, all that sort of stuff. The, the process they used for harvesting all the rest of this was a sickle bar mower. Cut down the plants and they used a rake, rake it into windrows, and then it just dried in the field here over the course of about a week. And then once it was dried, they'd have a baler come through, put it into large rectangle bales, moved it over to the gin. Stem diameter makes a difference in terms of fiber quality and the fineness of the fiber. You want a narrower stem because the, the plant with a narrower stem is gonna have more fiber content. If you're looking for bass fiber for textiles, plants that have wider stems tend to have coarser fiber and a lot more herds to them. But the ultimate determinant of your yield is, is the size of the plants. So tall, skinny plants is really what you want for fiber production. You know, ideally uh, for the hemp gin, we want our stalks to be, you know, probably in, in this size right here. This, this is what works best uh, through, the, through the converted cotton gin. So when we do a dense planting, and say even if we planted early in March, we would harvest that in 90 days and, and get you know 12 foot tall plants, all uniform, you know this size. Um, and you, then you could plant another 90 day crop. You know, so March, you could go in the middle of July, you could plant a whole nother crop. Your highest fiber quality is before flowering, because while it's like, way I could kind of explain it is that this, this is a lot of nutrients. Like this right here represents a ton of nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium, and especially nitrogen because like these seeds are really high in protein, right? And the process of the plant sending all the nutrients up to support this flower, you lose fiber quality by going through, through flowering. And uh, you'll also get shorter fibers, you'll get more lignin content, um, just, just older and coarser versus younger fiber, it's much longer, easier to peel, you'll have a lot more of it. And it also kind of changes the dynamics of how this, this crop will work in your rotations. Same way, just like a cover crop would, right? Usually you terminate a cover crop when? Right at flowering, that's, that's at the peak time because when the cover crop is flowering, you know it's not gonna produce any more biomass, so you've produced as much biomass as you can. But if you allow it to, set flower and set seed, all the nutrient that you want to put into your soil now goes into your flower instead. So with fiber hemp, what's you know exciting about it as far as a sustainable crop is that most everything that you're harvesting from the field in that, that fiber hemp, all these stems, this is all just carbon. But then if you go to seed here, that's where all your nutrient goes, just, just like any other, other crop, right? And the other places where there might be a lot of nutrient is gonna be in these leaves. And this is what it's, it's shedding while it's growing. And that's what you'll leave behind. Those nutrients are cycling. It's pulling nutrients up, putting it into the leaves, and it's shedding those leaves, putting on new leaves. And there's a whole cycle there. And that's also why I, I believe that fiber hemp will have a unique niche in cropping systems as compared to grain hemp or dual purpose hemp. There's also the yield increase effect. There's some studies out of Europe where winter wheat grown in rotation with hemp has a increased yield of about 
because it produces so much biomass, it also produces a lot of root biomass. Your ratio of above ground to below ground root biomass is 5.46 to one. So here, the average yield here was uh, six metric tons per acre. So then your root yield or your root biomass in the ground will be, you know, one, 1 1.2 tons, something like that. That root biomass production is theorized as like the reason why they see the yield increases afterwards because you've, you've increased your soil organic matter, soil porosity, like drainage. And then there's also like soil microbiome things, increases in, in mycorrhizal fungi populations. And that's another place where I think uh, fiber hemp could be interesting. It's also part of the reason why, why cover crops are so helpful is that during the vegetative cycle of the plant, the microbiome just explodes in diversity, explodes in life. And then as the plant starts to go into reproductive phase and starts producing its fruits, the biology, the microbiology starts to plummet. Part of the reason why I think fiber hemp will be so useful as a rotational crop and, and for increasing farm resilience. You know, you cut the plant when it's at the peak of its vegetative growth. So it's, it's done the most to really stimulate the root microbiome. And then the other thing is this plant is a hyper accumulator. It accumulates a lot of heavy metals. So it is a pretty good, you know, phytoremediator for all kinds of different heavy metals, lead, hydrocarbons, oil. And then it's a matter of, can you use this plant that has heavy metals in it for something, to make something where the heavy metals will not be an issue? It could be building materials. Because if you were to grow hemp on land, which is contaminated with heavy metals, and then now that hemp has X parts per million lead and Y parts per million arsenic, et cetera, et cetera. If you then put it into a block, a solid block, those heavy metals aren't gonna bother anyone. In the context of being part of a building, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have any negative effects on anyone.